a hot topic uh, on masonry design and detailing, and that has to do with lintels within a structural masonry building or within masonry walls. And I think you'll see why this is an important topic to talk about as we go through the next couple hours. And what we're really working towards here is an end goal of optimizing masonry building design, both structurally and in terms of detailing and ultimately cost for the project. So I appreciate the opportunity to bring this to you and I look forward to your questions. And with that, we will get going. All right, uh, this is copyrighted material, but everybody does have the PDF and you're welcome to use that internally for your personal use to review this. And uh, you're always welcome to send me questions or contact SK Ghosh Associates if you have questions as well. Another thing I like to remind people about is responsible use. I'm giving you what I believe to be good and accurate as well as code compliant information regarding this content, but it's up to you as responsible designers to go ahead and apply that appropriately to your projects. And as I said before, if you have any questions, then please do ask those uh, either during the presentation or at the end. Our general objectives for the day are going to be to first gain some insight into masonry lintel detailing. Uh, hopefully a lot of people have maybe had some exposure to this, but if you haven't, hopefully you'll find it very good. And for those of you who have worked with masonry lintels or steel or other lintel types in a masonry wall, I hope that this will provide some new insight to you or reinforce things that you already knew. I'm also going to demonstrate some structural performance benefits uh, from using masonry lintels within masonry walls. And then towards the end, our final kind of section will be uh, time to discuss and illustrate structural design approaches for masonry lintels. There's a few different ways that we can look at them and I'll share a few of those with you. And in the end, what I hope you'll see is that in a large improvement can be gained by using masonry lintels within masonry walls and that can be to the benefit of the overall building uh, performance. So let's begin with detailing performance benefits. This is kind of a, a generic or high level look at things and basically just trying to see ways that masonry lintels can clean up detailing and uh, make a building come together better. So one thing I want to start out with, and this is kind of the driver for the development of this presentation, was that um, we're finding projects where steel lintels are being specified by the engineers to be installed into masonry walls. And there's not really a problem with that. It's a structural member and you can make things work in terms of load capacities, deflection control, and everything else. But we are finding that a lot of uh, projects under construction were seeing delays on their projects while steel was being delivered to the site. And what we find with masonry lintels is that we can clean up that delay in particular, as well as deal with a few other things that we'll talk about. We can deal better with uh, differential movement. We can get rid of that essentially within the wall uh, system. We will clean up a lot of detailing issues. We will help with or eliminate thermal bridging. And we can also clean up our control joint layout. That's a benefit under our structural performance criteria. And there's options out there for wide cavities. We are seeing a lot of buildings being designed with instead of a one inch airspace and no insulation like we used to see years and years ago um, to seeing a couple to three or four inches of insulation, two to three or four inches of airspace. I've personally designed uh, wide ties for cavities as wide as eight to 10 or more inches. And so there needs to be some different solutions considered when you have a multi wife uh, cavity type wall and you're trying to span openings and what do you do with the lintels in those cases? And there's some masonry options that can help with that as well. So that'll be towards the end of the session. So I wanna talk a little bit more about this lintel delay situation. Uh, we've had projects where we see things as much as as long as uh, six to eight weeks of a delay being created while the mason is waiting for the steel to show up, sometimes as much as 10 to 12 weeks. And so to emphasize that point, what's going on there, if you think about things, if people haven't really addressed the needs of the project in sequential construction form and planned ahead, we find that sometimes the lintels are within the general steel package detailing and they may or may not even be fully detailed while the mason is able to be working on the project. So detailing takes some time and then it's going to go uh, through the construction uh, manager, general contractor's office for some quick review to the design team and end up with the engineer likely. And they're going to go through that, possibly some revisions, but most of the time we're pretty good. 
and then they can enter into a fabrication phase. And all of that will generally take somewhere in the six to eight week uh, phase, depending on how big the overall steel package is. The interesting thing there, the last bullet point, the galvanizing, is something that we're really seeing a lot of projects now, and rightfully so, are seeing at least the external wall lintels calling for hot dip galvanization. And depending on the size of the piece and the availability of local galvanizers, sometimes those need to be shipped to a galvanizer period, and other times you may have a galvanizer that can handle small to medium sized pieces. But if you have, say, a 16, 18, 20 foot opening, maybe they can or cannot dip that. 